welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing some bonus test hands for the zombie deck that I recently profiled. And I already did some test hands going both first and second, but I figured I wanted to showcase a bit more, mainly for going second, just because I wasn't particularly too satisfied with the turn 2 test hands compared to the turn 1 test hands. So I wanted to give a bit of a chance for the turn 2s in this particular build, or rather this particular video. So without further ado, let's just begin. But of course, if you guys enjoyed this kind of content, definitely drop a like, share, comment, and consider subscribing. It really matters. However, let's begin. Alright, so as we can see here, this is definitely not great with two uni zombies. Pretty much tells us that we have a dead card, but of course, you have to consider the potential of the deck itself as well, in terms of what it could potentially do in the following turn. So let's just start off with the uni zombie here. Having at least one of these two is very nice, but given we already have a zombie world, kind of makes the necro world banshee a bit irrelevant. But we're just going to activate the zombie world right now, and let's just go with our plays here. So firstly, we're going to ditch off our glob bloom. I think it's very powerful to start off with because it essentially gets you your battle drop which is essentially your negate so in this particular case you're already protected however uni zombie will teach off another card to the graveyard since we already have zombie world we have to think about uh, what we could potentially bring uh, to the table in this particular case so what do we want to go with here i thought maybe we could go for gozuki or Mizuki, though it doesn't really do too much by going for those particular cards. I mean, yes, you could go for Gozuki, but do you really get the opportunity to do anything at all? Uh, not really. I mean, to be honest, it doesn't look great. Um, of course, there is a way where we could actually just use the Battle Drop and bring it back out again. That could be a potential option. So, for example, we take these two, link it away, and we push ourselves to go for our Vampire Sucker. So, with that being said, instead of going for the Gozuki, uh, what you could potentially do is uh, take the um, Mizuki instead, so where would that be? Uh, it would be over here, and what you would do is you would banish off the Mizuki, but don't summon out Baladrock, summon out your Uni Zombie in this case. So, Vampire Sucker will trigger, so you're going to shuffle your deck and then draw for one. And now we're going to draw one card off of Vampire Sucker. We get here another Battle Drop, not particularly what we wanted, but I guess it's not too big of a complaint. But at least in this case, we did kind of change things up just a bit. We get one additional draw, which kind of benefits us in some sort of way. But we did bring out our Uni Zombie here, so it's not necessarily the worst thing. But keep in mind, on our following standby phase, uh, we could easily just bring back the Balladrock, which is obviously very nice given Zombie World is already out on the board. And given that you're doing this during your opponent's turn, you'll draw one more off the Vampire Sucker. So in this case, you'll get an Effect Mailer, which is pretty much a disruption. So uh, it's definitely very nice here. It's not about just going all out in one particular move. It's all about thinking about the potential of what your future plays will be on your next turn and in this case we secured ourselves plenty of resources and we could slowly just uh, get away at our opponent's life points rather than going all in and risking a big hit or risking into running into a trap guard all right so here's another opening hand are very different in this particular case, more spell heavy. But even so, let's just go over anyway. Sure, anyway. And we're going to bring out the Uni Zombie. Uh, do forgive me, guys, it is raining in the background, but uh, hopefully, it doesn't just uh, overwhelm the video too much. But we'll take Uni Zombie and we're simply just going to ditch off the Gozuki. And then we're going to ditch off one more card. In this case, we're going to ditch off the uh, Necro World Banshee. In which case she banishes herself, activating your zombie world directly from your deck. Always a powerful move, of course. Uh, we 
just leave it right there. Uh, but what's great is we do have over here a foolish. So we're just going to go for that, send off our glow of bloom, uh, banish that off, and summon out our Bellatrox. Very powerful move indeed. So just bring it out right over here. And of course, in this case, no, actually, I won't go for Glow Boom just yet. We're going to go for Mizuki. Uh, go for Mizuki first, and then summon out your Gozuki. And then, of course, Gozuki will ditch off your Glow Bloom, summoning out to your Bellatrox. So that's a better play. Uh, just got to be careful sometimes, you know. But even so, you have your Gozuki and your Uni Zombie, and you could simply just go for your Link Summon. Uh, you could go for whichever one you actually want to. I mean, going for Vampire Sucker is not necessarily the worst option, so uh, it's very nice there. Uh, there is an alternative option you could go for in this particular case. It seems very basic to go for this, right? So instead of going for your Vampire Sucker, uh, using that, of course, uh, instead, you keep these two on the board, use the Balladrock instead, and you could either use your Uni Zombie or your Gozuki. Doesn't really matter which one you want to go for. Uh, I mean, I keep the Gozuki on board, but I just send that to the grave, and we'll go for the Vampire Sucker. On the following standby phase, you get to bring back Balladrock anyway because you have Zombie World on the field. So you will draw a card off the Vampire Sucker in that particular circumstance. A much better play in that particular case. But of course, instead of going for Vampire Sucker, you could also go for, where is it, your It Mascarina. So with the It Mascarina, together with the Gozuki, you could uh, pretty much just link away immediately going into your Unicorn, which would also be a powerful move. And regardless, your Balladrock will come back on the standby phase anyway, so it's great. Of course, we also have here our Super Poly, a very powerful card. And if we don't use it, we still have here the Harpy's Feather Duster anyway. So definitely great options available for you. And yeah, it's just really good setup. Okay, so this is definitely very different. Obviously, we can't really do too much here, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. So what we could summon off with is the Gozuki allowing us to ditch off something to the graveyard. So in this case, what do you actually wanna go for? Well, you already have the zombie world, so maybe instead of uh, just ditching off immediately, you could activate the zombie world. And this will allow you to ditch off your... Where are you? Where are you? Glow of Bloom, banish that, and summon out your Balladrock. So, where are you? Over here. And of course, with that being said, uh, you do have some follow-up plays. So, since you are going second in this particular circumstance, uh, you could actually just um, go for your Super Poly, which is a pretty powerful move, if you ask me. Because you take Super Poly, uh, you ditch off the Mizuki, and then you simply use your Gozuki and your Balladrock, get rid of them, and this will allow you to go into your Fusion. So in this particular case, you go for a Starving Venom, very powerful, of course. If your opponent has monsters as well on their side of the field and you use their materials instead, going for Starving Venom, very powerful. Of course, if you also have Drag Necro, which I unfortunately don't have, keep in mind Zombie World is out on the board, so all of the monsters on the field are going to be zombie types, meaning the Super Poly is going to be a very powerful card. Uh, you could get rid of pretty much their strongest monsters on the board, so. Uh, absolutely powerful there, absolutely amazing. But with that being said, uh, we could easily just use the Mizuki. And this can bring us back uh, pretty much whatever we want. I'll just bring back the Balladrop. Alright, so here's a nice opening hand actually. Uh, we could just start off with the zombie world, uh, pretty much eliminating our options of going for a necro world banshee. But even so, we get to summon out uni zombie. Uni zombie will allow us to teach off one card. We already have glow bloom in hand, so we only really have two options. We could go for Mizuki, or we could go for a Gozuki. 
but I think we could still go for both anyway. So what I mean by this is uh, we'll just send off Gozuki to the graveyard and then of course we use uh, Uni Zombies effect, Ditch of uh, Glob Bloom and allowing us to summon out our Balladrock which is at least a negate to protect us. Uh, we ditch off the Mizuki and summon out our Jacobola. And of course Mizuki will last to ditch off that uh, itself at least and then bring out Gozuki uh, which is very powerful because Gozuki allows us to ditch off one more card from our deck to the graveyard. So in this case we just bring out more uh, Mizukis just because of the potential of the card itself. It's not a hard one per turn. So you could take your Gozuki and probably your Jacobolan, uh, link these two away and allow yourself to go for a Vampire Sucker. And then of course we could take Gozuki's effect, banish off the Jacobolan and this will allow you to summon out your Fraulein directly from your hand. So from that we also have our second Mizuki and we just keep going. It's really nice, uh, definitely just really powerful there. But of course, having this is already quite amazing. Um, I was thinking maybe with this particular board, we could take the Fraulein and the Uni Zombie. And of course, this will allow us to go for our Underclock Taker. That could be a powerful move because this, 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 pretty nice. However, here's an alternative move I actually have. So instead of going for your Underclock Taker, keep these two out on the board. Um, we take the Belladrock and we take the Uni Zombie and we're going to link them away. And this will still allow us to go for our Underclock Taker, but this time I want you to really be careful of where you put your link markers because from that, what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to banish off the Mizuki and summon back out our Uni Zombie. And from that, we take our Uni Zombie and our Fraulein and synchro summon them away allowing us to go for uh, our Void Ogre which is of course uh, very nice. Now since we are going second there is a bit of a downside and that is Uni Zombies effect preventing us from attacking from anything else except for zombie monsters so these two here are actually kind of pointless so we do have Void Ogre though so instead of Void Ogre since you are going second you would at least be able to go into your Shirinui's Shogun Saga. What's amazing about this is that uh, you pretty much get to boost up this, making it much stronger uh, than the 3000 it is. And of course you have Underclock Taker chipping away at your opponent's life anyway. So that's great. So even though you can't attack with Underclock Taker, it doesn't really matter because you're taking away so much points from your opponent's monsters, attacking with these two making it very strong. Of course Vampire Sucker also allows you to draw a card, so I'm going to shuffle my deck. And of course we draw a card off Vampire Sucker, because a card was summoned from the graveyard but since we banished off Mizuki. So that is an alternative option, and of course uh, it could depend on what you drew into as well. I happen to draw into this, but uh, who knows, you know. But even so, you get the point, this is definitely just really nice and it generates uh, quite a bit of a uh, amount of damage onto your opponent and I think the potential is there because of the fact that uh, there are so many situations where you could have went for something completely different, uh, it's a matter of what cards we drew into and what cards we have available and in this case, uh, with the opening hand I had with that, um, there was just so many things you could do and depending on how you built your deck and what you have in your extra deck uh, you could just raise the potential so much higher than I could. However that was pretty much it for today's video so I do hope you guys actually enjoyed this bonus test and video. Otherwise thanks for joining me today I hope you had a brilliant day I'll see you all next time.